This is Justin Westall's Substance. In this episode, we will explore Belladonna of Sadness. Sexuality plays a pivotal role in the supernatural Japanese cinema. Sex is treated as an inseparable part of nature and is often linked to the supernatural, framed as a mean for liberation of women. This idea is present in the 1973 anime fantasy film, Belladonna of Sadness. まだ息がある<笑><笑> Set in medieval France, Belladonna of Sadness follows newlyweds Jean and Jean on the night of their wedding. Jean is raped by the Baron and his accomplices. Jean has visions of the devil who seduces her to take revenge on her aggressors and then seize control of the town. He grants her powers, which she uses to spread a wave of sexual energy that causes the townspeople to engage in a widespread orgy, much to the dismay of the Baron. This is followed by a plague that kills a portion of the town. The Baron meets with Jean to make a deal, but she grows hungry with power and wishes to rule the entire world. She is deemed a witch and is sentenced to burn at the stake. In a change of heart, Jean attempts but fails to rescue her, rekindling her love for her late husband Jean embraces death. The faces of the villagers then become her face. Her soul survives, transferring to other bodies, and then eventually playing a significant role during the French Revolution. There is notable overlap between the depiction of sex in European and Japanese folklore and history, especially when positioned as a tool of liberation. It is through its metafiction leanings that Belladonna of Sadness comments on society, and explores social issues, including sex and oppression, in a liberation fantasy. In response to the socio-sexual oppression and abuse carried out by the Baron onto her, Jean lashes back with devilish power. Liberation is a common attribute in European fairy tale stories. It is also common for liberation in fairy tales to be tied to social politics, as they are in Belladonna of Sadness. Japanese supernatural films often place female characters in positions where they find liberation through their own sexuality, weaponizing sex against men. In such films, sex is treated as a man's weakness, thus the women exploit its potential and use it against them. This often takes a supernatural turn too, as liberation is achieved through supernatural forces. The Baron and his accomplices are intimidated by Jean's act of liberation and open expression of sexuality. The Baron's wife also grows jealous of Jean, both in terms of power as well as sexual prowess. The Baron's wife would otherwise be content with her social position, but Jean's magic poses a threat to her, causing her to spiral downward. This is also true for Jean as well, however. She grows power hungry as the film progresses and becomes jealous of what she does not have, which is then expressed through explicit sexual imagery. This lust for power, of course, leads to Jean's demise. In both European fairy tales and Japanese films, liberation through sexuality is achieved by contrasting gender through deconstruction, subversion, and hyperbole. Liberation itself is a response to the transgressions carried out by society, 
and in the case of Belladonna of Sadness, by the Baron and his accomplices. When Jeanne is raped, her body is shown literally splitting open, in a manner that can only be conveyed through the symbiotic relationship between fantasy storytelling and animation. There are sexual symbols throughout the film. The devil often takes the form of a phallus, and in other scenes, a sperm cell. The immediate reading one may have is that the film is taking on a rather feminist position, as it equates the physical manifestation of evil to be the thematic symbol of manhood and masculinity. Although matters are much more nuanced and complicated than the explicit symbolism seemingly suggests, the devil operates somewhere between good and evil, at least with accordance to the protagonist. The devil states that he can grow bigger and stronger with Jean's help, as he can also make her stronger as well. The devil implies that she can be liberated by giving into the sexual temptations that he represents. Jean is given the freedom to choose for herself, to liberate herself, and then seize control of the village. But such freedom is under the guidance of a man, though it is still a free choice nevertheless. Although this process of liberation leads to her demise, she achieves complete liberation through death after her real lover tries to save her, and she embraces the love as her soul moves on. Both processes of liberation display a sense of female empowerment, but ultimately are the freedom to choose and follow a man. Such politics are not very aligned with contemporary sensibilities of feminism in Western culture, but rather Eastern politics. The juxtaposition of the old village fairy tale aesthetic and the 1960s to 70s Japanese style was a purposeful choice in order to make Jean stand out as a modern woman. Thus, Belladonna of Sadness literally takes the modern woman and places her in a fairy tale environment where she finds her strength and gets burned at the stake for it. But unlike other stories, it doesn't end here, and it doesn't ruin what she has built, but instead persists beyond her life and into the lives of other women.